Hi, my name is Steve Torsa. I'm the founder of Wholesale Investor and Capital HQ. Today, we are diving into the truth about pitch decks and your capital raising. So firstly, the current belief about capital raising is step one, create the all important pitch deck, right? This seems to be the entire focus of the ecosystem. In fact, most days I get news pop up fees going, here's the pitch deck that raised X amount of money. Here's the pitch deck that raised $15 million. I cannot tell you how far from the truth that actually is, but this is the current thinking. Now, step two is send it out to as many VCs and angels as possible. And then step three is send it out to enough so that eventually money comes rolling back in. Step four, make an announcement to start up media about your capital raise. And then step five is if they don't invest, then basically it's their fault for not understanding or taking the time to understand your business. Right now, step six of this process is something that most people don't want to talk about is then go and complain about how investors aren't taking the time to understand or they don't want to back risk that you know, VCs only want to invest into home runs, etc. Right. This is the current process that's going on right now when people are going to raise capital. So what's the truth? Well, let me break it down for you. Step one, no one is entitled to raise money and no one is entitled to succeed in business. In fact, the great majority of companies that are actually raising capital right now will ultimately fail. I think the stats are that somewhere in the range of nine out of 10 companies that are currently raising capital will fail at the various rounds, whether it be seed, pre-seed, series A, etc. Except yes, as founders, we have to wholeheartedly believe in what we are building, but as investors, they understand the facts and the numbers that go around this. Step two, VCs have certain types of investment opportunities that they are looking to invest into. They have certain mandates and they have an investment thesis about what they actually want to back. Three, if they provide you with feedback, it has either the power to serve you or be irrelevant. Plenty of great businesses have been missed by VCs. Also, VCs in many occasions for companies have been the reason where they've provided the context as to why they're not investing where it's actually been incredibly beneficial for the company. They've taken that advice on board and it's gone on to help them greatly in the success of their business, right? This is part of the game. Sometimes you get great advice. Sometimes you get advice which is irrelevant. The reality is that is basically how the ecosystem works. Four, investors do not need to work hard to understand you. You need to work hard on articulating your business, your opportunity, in the way that it creates the best opportunity for you going forward, right? So it ultimately sits on your shoulders. If people aren't understanding what you're doing, that is your fault. The reality is, I said, there's a lot of technical founders out there who want to go into the into the more in the products and the technical aspects of what they're doing. That's great at step two and step three. Step one, you need to work hard on articulating what you do in the simplest possible way to get people interested in your business and in your opportunity. No different to how you work hard on that with your customers, right? You've got to remember your capital raise is simply a product. The product is the shares in your business, right? It is a marketing and sales process when you're going through a capital raise and the product that you are selling is the shares in your business. So therefore you need to work hard on articulating it and actually attracting people to your opportunity. Now, as I mentioned at the start, the pitch deck is not quite the magical document that you think it is, right? Because often what happens is people are sending around pitch decks on uh, LinkedIn, they're sending it over email. The amount of pitch decks that investors, VCs, and even myself will receive every single day of the week is absolutely astonishing. Let me break down for you how the key parts you need to focus on to try and build that interest and build that awareness about what you're doing. First one is your hero text. That is the headline for your business. It's a three to seven word statement that effectively outlines what it is that you are doing as a business. You know why you need that? Because that is effectively the attention span that you get of investors once they're trying to decide whether they're interested in, in looking further at your opportunity. So as much as you've spent time creating a 30 to 40 page document, which outlines everything about your actual business, the sad truth is for all of us, including me, we're going to get seconds of headspace to decide whether we're actually interested or not. Second, your elevator pitch, right? The elevator pitch is commonly talked about, but very poorly executed. So when someone asks you, what do you do? Have ready to go. Do you know how? 
identify problem statement. What we do is identify your solution. It's a really simple structure. It's a really simple formula. It will conform the basis of your conversations going forward. Every single day, all of us are actually talking about our businesses. Let that be your guiding point. Then the next stage is basically your investment highlights or your capital raising brand elements. Now I've got another video on that. You can click here to watch that actual video, or maybe it's this side, right? Where to break down the capital raising brand elements, but build those highlights because effectively, the entire ecosystem has been geared by media to look for these capital raising brand elements and highlights to know whether we're going to be interested or not. And then the next stage is your actual pitch deck. So there's three tiers of interest that you need to get to get to before you actually get to the magical pitch deck document. And the other fact I'm going to give you is, is your pitch deck does not raise you money. Let me make that clear. Your pitch deck does not raise you money, right? It is the relationship that you build with the investor. It is the traction that you've been able to achieve. It's the elements that they're looking for in the business that help them decide whether they're going to invest that make the biggest difference. Your pitch deck is a stake in the sand. It's your business case to an investor to see if that aligns with their investment thesis. In that you outline all different elements, whether it be the traction elements, unit economics, you know, the size of the market, etc. There's all these different factors which help structure information in a way which is relevant to the ecosystem. But that is all it does. It is just part of the interest building process. Focus on building relationships with investors. Focus on getting to know them. Focus on trying to understand what it is that they like and to invest into because really you're both seeking the same thing. You're there looking for investments which are relevant for their investment thesis and you're looking for an investor which is also relevant to your business case thesis and what you're looking to build. So I hope that gives you some more insights into the truth about the pitch deck and also your capital raising. I know it's probably a bit more detailed, a bit more animated than I normally do, but this has been a common frustration point for me with every single day I have founders reaching out saying, oh, investors don't understand me. Investors only want to invest into this. You know, they only want the easy, they only want the easy wins. They don't want to invest into the different hard. Oh, like these investors don't understand me. You know, ultimately at the end of the day, we end up being a pin cushion for both sides, right? Where we've got investors, investors will complain about the way in which companies will present to them. And I've got companies complaining about the way in which investors aren't taking the time or they don't understand what they do. The reality is the first start starts with you when you're raising is just to simplify your message and articulate, articulate it in the way which best serves the potential and the opportunity for your business going forward. Build relationships with investors, Give them time and space to understand what you're doing. And lastly, as I mentioned before, you are not entitled to raise money. They can do with their capital whatever they wish to do, right? And all of us have to work for the opportunity to be invested into because that's part of our job. I hope these tips have been helpful for you and all the best with your capital raising. Have a great day.